Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hoke here with one of the worst investing rules you can follow. We recently got a comment in the Facebook group, a fellow citizen of the Bowtie Nation commenting that he had made the cardinal sin of panic selling, selling his stocks when the market plunged. Of course, this brought out a wave of comments and the unbreakable rule in investing to always buy low and sell high. And it makes sense, right? If you never sell but at a higher price, then you'll never lose money, right? In this video, I'll show you why the rule for buy low and sell high is worse than meaningless and can actually lose your money. Why sometimes you'll make more money if you buy high and sell low. Stick around though, and I'll also reveal three reasons to sell a stock even if you're losing money. Before we get started though, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now understand, I don't blame anyone for repeating this rule that you should only ever buy low and sell high. It just seems to make common sense. But the problem here is you never really know what's high and what's low, do you? High can go higher and low can just keep sinking. And the worst part about this advice is you could be sitting in that stock for years waiting for it to rebound and sell higher than you bought it. You might eventually turn a profit, but those years of dead money actually cost you more because you weren't invested in something better. And one of the best examples of this, I did a video in October 2018 warning investors on shares of AT&T that a massive debt load and the business strategy was setting the company up for failure. At the time, the shares were trading for about $32.50 each, but were paying a 6% dividend, so investors just stuck with the company. And the stock has crashed ever since, trading as low as $22 each last December when I reevaluated it and began buying the shares. Now it's up 17% since then, but investors that held on from 2018 are only just now breaking even when including the dividend. That is three years of one of the strongest bull markets in history, sitting in a dead money stock waiting for it to rebound and sell high versus just reevaluating the investment, selling at a loss, but then making 81% on the money in tech stocks in the NASDAQ. Nation, do not be confined to these investing rules like buy low, sell high, if it means you miss out on better investments. And do not be scared of dumping a bad investment at a loss if you can find something better. If you do wanna stay ahead of the market, I wanna personally invite you to get the weekly bow tie, our free newsletter with all the market news, investing strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll share what's coming up in the week ahead, what to watch for, and the stocks that could define the week. It's all completely free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community, so look for the sign up link I'll leave below. Now I am going to share three reasons you can use to sell a stock, none of which involve market timing or being able to tell the future, but what we're really talking about here in this buy low, sell high question is the difference between active and passive investing, so I want to cover that first. Passive investing is pure buy and hold. It's basically a commitment to hold a stock until you retire and need that money. In fact, a lot of times, passive investors won't even hold that many individual stocks, but are going to invest in the entire market with something like the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, ticker VTI, which holds all 4,000 plus stocks trading on the US exchanges. Passive investors want that stock market return without the risks to timing the market or, or making those bad investing decisions that can destroy your returns. Pros of passive investing are that you get that stress-free strategy that does really well over time. If you're not selling no matter what, you stop worrying about those ups and downs of the market. You deposit your money and invest regularly and you just let it ride. Passive investing is also less costly and easier on your taxes. You're going to pay fewer trading costs and you won't have those constant capital gains taxes other investors have to pay. Cons of passive investing are that it does take away that potential for higher returns. Worse still though, it may also mean that you sit in that dead money stock for years. You're mentally locked into a company's stock or an investment and you might not see the signs to sell before watching your portfolio go nowhere for years. Active investing is the hands-on approach to your investments, using the analysis and the ideas we talk about here on the channel for that higher return. That means you're regularly re-evaluating your stocks and others to find the best possible investments. Now, even active investing, though, doesn't mean you jump to sell a stock at the first sign of trouble. Even the three reasons to sell that we'll look at next, you're going to be likely holding a stock for years or even decades. Think of it this way. A good stock should be like marriage, a long-term commitment through good times and bad, Okay, maybe a good stock should be like your second marriage. Pros of active investing are that it does enable that upside potential. You collect that premium for becoming a better investor and you do make more money. Another benefit is that it's just more fun. Now, I'm not saying you should play around with your financial future. 
you take investing seriously, but there's no denying the energy and the excitement you can get from following the market and your favorite stocks. The downside is kind of the mirror opposite to the upside on passive investing. To say actively following the market can be stressful is like saying getting punched by Mike Tyson is only a little painful. And there's also the risk of making those bad investments, buying or selling at the wrong time, and you're gonna be paying higher fees and taxes if you're regularly turning over your stocks. Before I reveal those three reasons to sell a stock then, I wanna get your opinion on this. Which do you prefer, that passive investing strategy of buying a stock and just holding on no matter what, or would you rather do that active analysis, still holding stocks for the long term, but maybe buying and selling to find the best investments? So scroll down and let me know in the comments below, active versus passive investing. Now I wanna show you those three reasons to sell a stock. Three ways to know when to cut your losses without relying on meaningless rules like buy low and sell high. First is if there's a major lawsuit or a scandal and not just because of that. Understand that bad things happen even to good companies and bad decisions are made. The problem here is when there is no accountability or change by management. This is what happened at Wells Fargo. It was discovered in 2016 that service reps had been creating unauthorized accounts and credit applications to boost their sales numbers. Management knew about it and did nothing. And even after the report, it took months for management to take responsibility and then make those changes to the corporate culture. Now that lack of responsibility cost shareholders with a dead stock for years, one that just last year started recovering. Good companies can move on from bad decisions, but bad management can wreck your portfolio. Another reason to sell is if a company goes on a debt-fueled buying binge. This most often happens when a company is struggling to boost its own sales growth, so a lot of times in those, those mature industries that see slower revenue growth. Management thinks that it can buy growth, and since interest rates are low, why not just borrow the money? And that's what happened to AT&T. Suffering from three years of sales growth under 1.5%, management started a buying binge to boost revenue. First paying $66 billion for DirecTV in 2014, and then $85 billion for Time Warner in 2016, both still among the largest media acquisitions in the past decade. Acquisitions can work, but this strategy of loading up on tens of billions of dollars in debt, especially when companies are swallowed up before that previous deal is integrated, it rarely works as well as expected, and the bill always comes due. In fact, selling a stock if it reaches my fair value estimate is the least often reason I use. This is where that idea of active investing comes in though. Having that process you can use to value a stock, whether it's with some of the ratios we talk about on the channel or other measures. Reevaluate your stocks maybe once or twice a year and decide what that fair value is. And now even that doesn't mean you jump to sell that stock. A lot of times new information has come out that's gonna boost your estimate for that fair value. Usually I'll let a stock run as much as 20 or 30% above my fair value estimate before selling just so I don't miss out on further gains. Click on the video to the right for a step-by-step -step to creating a dividend ladder and living off your dividends, how to get your stocks to pay your bills. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.